How to talk to lawyers and judges when you're sued for debt and going pro se. Brought to you by YourLegalLegal.com, your advantage if you're being sued by debt collectors. I've discussed some of the background realities of talking with judges and the attorney for the other side when you're representing yourself as a defendant in a suit for debt in real words about talking to judges and lawyers, which is posted both on YouTube and at Your Legal Leg Up, our site. And while I'm thinking of it, let me tell you, there's a lot of help there in our site for you, both free and through our membership. You'll find links in the video description below, and if you're representing yourself, you should consider the kind of help we can offer. In any event, in the article and video about talking to judges and other lawyers, I mentioned that you face systemic discrimination as a pro se defendant because neither judges nor the lawyers will respect you. That gives you a special burden. It means, above all, that you have to be better than the lawyer for the other side to receive appropriate respect. There are reasons this is possible, but it's primarily because of the business model of the debt collectors. They take a factory approach, and that means your case will simply get very little individual treatment from the company or their lawyers. It just isn't profitable for them to do that. Nor is it profitable for them to hire lawyers from the Ivy Leagues, let's just say. Their whole approach is to bug you into paying without suing you, and then to file huge numbers of suits, file, uh, knowing most people won't defend themselves at all and will allow a de default judgment. Defending yourself, therefore, takes you way out of the ordinary and gives you your chance. It's a start, but you also have to put in enough work to be better than the other side, and that's what we discuss here. Because of the general lack of respect for pro se defendants, when you say something, you will be more likely to need to cite controlling authority than a lawyer would. They can make references to black letter law, which is just legalese for generally obvious or often said, but you will do better if the issue is important at all to cite a case decision that supports what you're saying. I'm not saying this is entirely unreasonable, by the way, because there are some kind of crazy ideas out there. And if you um, if you subject to those ideas to looking for uh, court decisions supporting them, um, then you will find that there aren't any decisions supporting them and maybe not a good idea to bring them up. But it does mean that research is going to be important to you. <clears throat> One thing non-lawyers seem to have trouble with is keeping things relevant. If you're arguing about whether the debt collector has proof they own, own the debt or you owe it, some things will shine a light on that issue. But the fact that the company has been sued by the federal government for collection abuses will not do that, for example. Because of the way the court sees you, it will have very little tolerance for any straying off topic. It, the, court, the judge, will think that you're wasting time and often tune out. Uh, by the way, judges are frequently referred to as it, uh, it as the court, instead of, you know, whatever gender their person is. Therefore, make sure everything you say relates to exactly the issue that you're discussing. A related issue is keeping things brief. Again, the court will quickly sense you're wasting time if you veer away from the most important things at all, and this could have a disastrous effect on you. The judge could shut you down completely. The judge doesn't need to know why you thought something or planned something. It needs to know what the law requires in your situation, and if you try to say other stuff, the court will not forgive you. Pro se defendants seem to have a tremendous difficulty with this. You want to tell your story, but let me tell you that the court could not give one damn about your story. Legal talk is very different in this respect than regular human talk. Do not waste the court's time. This comes up in teleconferences sometimes. When I try to keep the conversations focused, some people feel like they absolutely must say what they intended to say. And in normal talk, you tend to let this happen, but judges will crush you for it. Don't whine. That's another one. This is probably self-explanatory, but it's part of the other things I've mentioned. Because the court does not care about your feelings, it will regard anything that you say or insinuate um, or suggest about your feelings as a waste of time. <laughs> On a related note, thanks to a comment I got in a recent video, 
Let me also say, no sarcasm. Don't use sarcasm. It requires extra interpretational effort. You might do that for someone you trust and respect, but the judge doesn't trust and respect you in that way. It's just true, so get over it. Know when to hold and know when to fold. This is part of maintaining self-discipline and paying attention to the judge. When the judge says they've ruled, you are on extremely borrowed time, and ordinarily you should just shut up and sit down. As I point out in real talk, you do that by saying, thank you, Your Honor, and then sitting down. <laughs> but sometimes you don't think you've had a chance to raise a crucial point. In that rare situation, you might say something like, I hear that, Your Honor, but I wanted to make sure you knew that they caught the defendant red-handed holding the knife with blood all over him. You get it, right? It had better be very important. And even then you're on thin ice, but sometimes you have to say something to preserve the record. Judges can be hasty, and especially so with pro se debt defendants. So sometimes you may feel you have to point something out, but make sure it's good. Otherwise, you're just going to make the judge mad and they will shut you down. You may be thinking I'm spending a lot of time warning you about making the judge mad. Well, I did tell you that a lot of them think of themselves as sorts of guides. They have a lot to do, and they think if they think you're slowing them down, they will make you pay. And what they'll do is they'll tell you to sit down and they just won't let you talk. And then you will not be able to make your case at all. But speaking of anger, you must always keep your feelings in check when you're talking to the judge. Double standard, right? If you raise your voice, you could get thrown in jail for contempt of court. But of course, it's much more likely the judge will just stop listening to you for the rest of the case. Baseball coaches seem to think it helps sometimes to get kicked out of a game, but this is never going to be a good strategy for you. <laughs> so, shut up and collect your thoughts and be ready for the next thing. And now just a few words about the lawyers. First, keeping your cool is just as important with them as it is with judges. They can't throw you in jail, but they can certainly tune you out in lots of ways, and it won't be good for you if they do. Because you'll be negotiating in various ways with the other lawyer, you need to remember one thing for lawyers, and you know, for most people really, talk is cheap. Because they don't have a lot of respect for you, if you tell them, we should settle this thing now, or I'm going to file a motion for summary judgment next week, or some other motion like that, they're just going to ignore that. They don't think you'll do it, and they don't worry what would happen if you did. Any similar threats are pointless and more harmful than good. Instead, do the work first and let your actions speak for you. Incidentally, a lot of lawyers try the same trick with the same results, i.e. nothing. But whereas I could probably draft a motion for summary judgment and send it to the other side saying that if they don't settle, I'm going to file the motion, you probably couldn't even do that. I mean, you could do it. Uh, but there's a chance they'd read it if a lawyer wrote it, but they probably wouldn't even read anything you send until you did file it. It's that lack of respect thing. Again. So go ahead and file what you're going to file. Let your actions do your talking. As I say elsewhere, make them believe they won't listen to anything from you that seems in the least bit like an easy way out for you. And incidentally, They'll hear that as an easy way out for you, even if you're trying to present it as an easy out or a cheap route for them. Don't even try it. Instead, take the hard way and direct all your efforts towards winning. That will cost them money and make them more likely than anything else would to want to settle with you. And it will be on better terms. And if they don't settle, of course, you'll be in better shape, too. Good luck, and remember that if you need help doing any of the things I've mentioned, you should visit our site. I recommend the 2020 membership, and the link is below. Helping people protect their rights is what we do. Protect what's yours, and don't let the debt collectors rip you off. Your Legal Leg Up.com.